celebrations. <clears throat> it is my great honor and privilege to present to you Waylon Lewis, a local author, founder of the magazine Elephant Journal that became that went online uh, by choice, host of the Walk the Talk show, winner of numerous awards for sustainability, environmentalism, uh, noted as a prominent Buddhist, but most exciting to me personally, a man who bicycles every season of the year, and that's how we arrived here today. Um, so anyhow, thank you so much. Welcome. Man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So I actually, I didn't bike today. I was feeling a little, little lazy, so I took my, uh, it's not a Hummer, but it's the Hummer XL. It's a little bigger. <laughs> So also I had to stop at to, uh, to Walmart on the way here to buy everyone a plastic bottle of water. Um, so how many of you, um, you, know, you can tell I bike because I'm sweaty and uh, I just had coffee so I feel very awake. <laughs> uh, sweaty and caffeinated, that's the talk you're going to get today. So how many of you actually consider yourselves environmentalists? No pressure. Who's an environmentalist? Adults don't count. As usual. Any any of the little children here, do you consider yourselves environmentalists? Anyone? I see one person trying to. Yeah? Yeah. Delayed reaction. Environmentalists? Okay, so we have two. Did I see two? All right, so clearly I'm at the wrong high school. I should go to uh, a bigger high school where they actually give a care about the planet. Um, all right, so. Who here, so really, none of you are environmentalists, that's, that's crazy. So, um, all right, now I'm depressed, I'm gonna go curl up in the corner, take a little nap. Um, so why are you a very reluctant environmentalist? Um, Who probably isn't really, you just decided to raise your hand because it's funny. No, I take the bus a lot and I bike a lot. Awesome. And, and I do drink water. Awesome, yeah, don't drink water and then you save the planet. <laughs> That's actually, I'm Scottish, that's a Scottish tradition as well. We won't go into detail on that one. Why are you an environmentalist? Because uh, you're in the front a, row and I it's getting awkward. I go to a ton of rallies yeah. and protests. I kind of know you I do. I haven't drinking out of a water bottle for four years, or a plastic water bottle. Cool. <laughs> and, yeah. Cool. Okay, so, um, well, with that rather rough start, two heroes up front, the rest of you sellouts. Um, all right, so who here, let me get some more hands up on this one. Who here knows who Bill O'Reilly is? And don't worry, adults, we're not getting into politics. Who knows who Bill O'Reilly is? Wow. Do you guys know, what do you guys know? All right. Teachers, what are you doing? All right, so Bill O'Reilly is this old, really popular guy. He was the most popular TV guy in the whole country. He made billions of dollars for? O'Reilly Auto Parts. <laughs> Out. It wasn't that funny. It was pretty funny. It was pretty funny. It wasn't like 30 seconds of laughter funny, right? Am I right, bored guy? Back there in the third row, he's bored. All right, so people don't, you're right, people don't give him the credit due for his O'Reilly Auto Parts empire. But he made a lot of money for Fox News. Who has heard of Fox News? Fox. Who has heard of Donald Trump? Okay, we're getting somewhere. Good job. My job here is done. You didn't learn anything, but what else is new? Just a joke. I thought that was funny. Um, okay. 
So, Bill O'Reilly made billions of dollars, literally billions, right? That's a lot of money, right? Who here has a billion dollars? Zero. Clearly that guy. <laughs> I know. So, he just, what just happened to Bill O'Reilly? He got kicked off the show. So, what does that mean? He got kicked off. What does that mean? Like, what is Donald Trump's show about? Remember his apprentice show? He got fired. fired. He just got fired. Why did the most popular money making guy in America on TV just get fired? And don't don't say naughty stuff. Cool. He was giving controversial re reports on Donald Trump. No. Okay. So, <laughs> but good try. I'm glad I came here today to have a conversation with you all day. <laughs> No, seriously, you're my favorite one so far. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't said anything. Um, no. um, so he got fired because millions of Americans cared about something that he did, which we won't go into. So lots of people cared. So is caring cool? Anyone? Caring. Is it cool? Yeah. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who here is a dog? Who here cares about their dog? Who here thinks it would be cooler? Who thinks it would be cooler to not care about your dog? Oh, you're a stupid dog. I'm pretty cool. <laughs> that guy. That guy definitely needs to go out. Ladies, don't go for guys like him. <laughs> All right. So it's cool to care about your dog. Is it cool to care about other animals? Any other animals? Yeah. Who here cares about another animal and what animal? Yeah. And girls fighting in the fourth row, you're grounded. <laughs> or whatever they do in high school. Who here cares about another animal? Kind of animal. Yeah. Frog. Frog. Why do you care about frogs? Uh, well, because I have one. <laughs> but why do you care about it? Is it cool? Is it what's? I don't know. I've just had it for a while. <laughs> okay. Those are two really boring answers. <laughs> You're competing with me on boring right now. All right. Why do you care about the frog? Like, why is it interesting? Does it just sit there and go? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, good job caring about a frog, because, you know, that can be tough. Um, anyone have a horse, horseback riding? Cat? <laughs> What's that? Shy horseback riders? No? Okay, here. Do you ride a horse? She's a horseback rider. I'm talking with this horseback rider. All right, do you? <laughs> So do you care about your horse? Yeah. yeah, so I grew up riding horses right over here. Um, it's now open space. I love my horse. Horses often are turned into what? Meat. Yeah, meat. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Horse totally. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to text all my friends. Gelatin. Um, so horses get turned into meat and glue. That's not very nice, right? And glue. And glue. glue. It's a party now. So. <laughs> What I'm trying to get to is, is kind of okay to care. And when you're, when you're young, like you guys, not old like me, it's often, you're, you know, the, the cool thing is like not to care. So right now, spring, let's get into environmental stuff. What has changed? Maybe I'll stop asking questions because you're sick of my boring questions. Spring now comes 20 days earlier in Colorado than it did only 50 years ago. Why is that? You can just say two words and you're going to Climate change. Climate change, awesome. So what's wrong with spring coming earlier? Spring is awesome, winter's kind of, unless you ski, sorry, no more snow. Spring is kind of cool. Is there a problem with spring coming earlier? What's the problem? Yeah. <laughs> There's no problem. There is a problem. You will talk. Forward, the, the bees aren't going to come and pollinate. Yeah, and speaking of bees, what just happened to the American bee this year? I forget the technical name. Bumblebee, some astrophysiologist. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it dying? Yeah, it's on the endangered species list. That's crazy. Why couldn't we have flies or mosquitoes on the endangered species list, right? <laughs> Am I right? They're vital. Right, well, they're, everyone's vital. Good point. But bees are really vital. What do bees do for us? Yeah, so as Einstein actually didn't say, if you Google fake quotes, um, if bees die, we'll starve in something like four months. 
right? So we have to have bees because they do complicated stuff with the flowers, something like that. <laughs> I'm kind of an, kind of an expert. Um, so basically, what I'm trying to get at is that environmentalism is in trouble right now. It's not very cool. People don't want to read about it. People want to, what do you guys enjoy watching on TV or reading? What is cool? What are, what's something cool? Cool, what's cool? I obviously don't know. What are you guys into? Other than... Spanish class. <laughs> I hear that, I hear that from all of you, Spanish class. And, her t and why is that? Is it the teacher, his charisma, his integrity? Um, so no, what's something that you guys enjoy? I'll, I'll just answer for you, since this is becoming a typical adult lecture, uh, where everyone just stares silently <laughs> and waits for it to be over. Um, so Star Wars makes billions of dollars, right? Yeah. Star Wars is a huge corporation. Who's it owned by? Disney. 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 And guess who, you know, so the rebels in Star Wars, so literally you have a huge corporation selling you the rebellion, right? Is it a real rebellion? What's a real rebellion? Climate, those who are fighting climate change, right? So basically, does anyone know what Standing Rock was? Yeah. I know you do. Yeah, so there's also Keystone, uh, the head of NASA. Anyone here like science, other than Spanish class? So the head of NASA, I think his name is James Goddard or something. It's been a while. Um, he said that Keystone was, yeah? He said that Keystone was, the Keystone pipeline was the nail in the coffin of climate change. Climate change will be the nail in the coffin of who? Us. Yeah, right. So I was biking here today and I was thinking, you know, I, we, Elephant here, we're live videoing this to our five million Facebook fans and uh, then our five million YouTube and all that, our uh, 11 million readers a month on Elephant. That's a lot of numbers, right? Who's more important, and this isn't me being nice, who's more important to the environment, me or any one of you? Any one of you? Huh? Uh. Just you? <laughs> yeah, not there so much, you know, let's be honest. Um, yeah, so you, why are you guys more important than me with all my millions of fans and whatever? Huh? Oh, not by much, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> oh, come on, how, how could you tell? Yeah. Yeah, or not. You're going to be inheriting what's left of it, right? So, every so Boulder has a reputation of being the greenest town in the U.S., right? Has anyone heard that? We're one of the greenest towns. We have bikes. We're healthy. We like to drink lots of kombucha. <laughs> we drink lots of smoothies. What else do we do that's environmentally responsible? Not that smoothies are environmentally responsible. You're shipping fruit all over the world, freezing it, and then grinding it up and drinking it and calling it healthy, when really it has more sugar than Coca-Cola. But enough beating up on smoothies. Yeah. What's that? Tiny homes. We have some tiny homes? We have solar. OK, so both, yeah. Right, so we do compost and recycling, not just trash. And why is trash bad? And it kind of farts, if you know what I mean. No, it literally does. The word fart is always vaguely funny, so I thought I'd go there. But it, it, it contains <laughs> methane, and methane is released. So if you compost and you, what, what does compost become? Any of the adults want to jump in? Adults love to garden. Yeah. Huh? Dirt. Yeah, it becomes good dirt, right? And uh, dirt is what we grow food with, right? And then the bees are happy and everyone's happy and we can stop having Earth Day. And we can do cool stuff like watching Star Wars. So, um, so climate change is a serious, serious thing. And right now, a lot of the people in charge of the world, old, generally old white men, don't believe in science, don't believe in climate change. So if you want to be a real rebel, or a cool person, I say, don't go with the old white men. <laughs> Unless they're cool old white men. There's occasional cool old white men. Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, go with, go with the people who are trying to help. Um, so right now in the, this greenest town in the US, Boulder, uh, yesterday I was, anyone know Wonder Juice, Wonder Cafe? No. Awesome place. Oh 
Oh, yeah. Cecily and Brooke and Robin? Yes. Yeah, cool. They're all buddies. Um, I know a lot of people. Um, <laughs> so who knows Boxcar Cafe? Who knows uh, Thrive? What do all three places do? Yeah, someone say it out loud. Everyone here is like the whispering, the whispering children of Shiny Mountain. Compost. Compost. It's like Mr. Smithers. Compost. <laughs> okay, someone say it loudly. Compost. Good morning. Mom, you don't count. Compost. Say it really, just like frighten some people. Compost. Compost! <laughs> Alright, so compost. So they all have compostable water cups and coffee cups, right? Is that good? Someone say it loudly. Yes! Yes! Did anyone say no? Because I'm really interested in that. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna hug you really hard if you said no. Did you say no? Awkward moment coming for some reason. <laughs> Yeah, this is between you and me. Don't try and get out of it. You know this talk goes for three hours, right? So get comfortable. Um, okay, so compostable cups. So yesterday I'm in Wonder, and I would say 75% of everyone who was sitting at a table in Wonder had a compostable to-go cup. What are you supposed to do, do with a to-go cup? Go. 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 Why was everyone sitting down drinking with a compostable to-go cup? thought it was okay for the environment. Right. That's a very polite version. I would say because they're lazy and they don't care. And they're bad people. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Right. So, so, so many of us do kind of halfway things and we're like, ah, eh, the environment will be fine. So, so you were totally right. They thought it was okay. But really, like, did anyone see that really old movie? If anyone did, uh, I'll be surprised. Um, what was the movie where they dropped the Coke bottle out of the sky? The, the, the gods must be crazy. <laughs> so one, the power of one bottle, the power of creating one thing, like we make stickers, right? We print our business cards on the back of those stickers. That way we don't have to print business cards as well. So we double it up, right? Because everyone loves stickers. They're plastic, which is bad and we'll get into that, but at least we double up, right? And if you print a paper sticker, what happens? It rains once or twice a year in Boulder, and then it, and then it falls apart. So that's not sustainable either. So th you have to think through things. So we call these stickards, which is not that funny. Sticker card. Um, so compostable cups. So almost all my friends in the greenest town in America take to-go cups every single day. And most of those cups aren't compostable. Most of them are bleached, right? What does bleach do to fish or to uh, nature, basically? It kills. it kills it. It kills it. And most of them are bleached. And then what lines the to-go cup so it doesn't plastic. spill all over you? So plastic. Is plastic a healthy thing to put a hot liquid in and then throw into no. your no. body? Why is that not good? If any of you get this right, I'll be really impressed. The guy who formerly said something, I can't remember what he said. Yeah, but why is plastic bad? Or is it? Uh, it is bad. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it's a complicated question. Anyone? Carcinogenic. Mom, cheater. <laughs> uh, anyone who hasn't said anything yet? Come on, let's get some people back in this really quiet corner. Anyone? Plastic. Good or bad? If so, why? Come on. Your parents are here, they'll give you a dollar later. Wait, what's, the question? what's that? What's the question? The question is for this quiet corner, and we're all gonna stare at them. Everyone stare at this corner and make it really awkward. Anyone in this corner who hasn't talked yet, including you in the blue, back to there. Why is plastic good or bad? You can make something up, just say something. Get this moment over with. <laughs> I got all day. I don't have to talk if you guys are Bum, 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 bum. No, it's this corner. Sorry. <laughs> Anyone, just say something. Yeah. Because the chemicals leach into your drinks that are in the plastic? Good enough. <laughs> so, plastic, when it's 
So what is plastic made of? Does anyone know that? I wish. That would be cool. Say that louder. Petroleum. Petroleum. What is petroleum? What's petroleum? Oil. What did we, what do, what does America like to go to war about? Oil. Oil. It, we're literally taking oil out of the earth, wherever, Canada or maybe the Middle East or, you know, Texas back in the day. Mexico. Sometimes in Colorado still. Uh, Venice Beach used to be covered with oil drills. Anyone been to Venice Beach? Can you imagine going to Venice Beach and having like disgusting oil, oil things, the whole, what are those called? Oops. 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 Oil Thank you. Derek's. Or you're just talking to your friend named Derek. All right. So it's made out of oil. So literally it's made out of oil and then it's this hard substance. We're talking about plastic. The reason why this is interesting is because how did they make it flexible? How many of you wear yoga pants ever? <laughs> what are yoga pants? Yeah, the, the guy in the back is not ashamed. So, <laughs> so what are yoga pants made out of? Plastic, oil. So, so that's interesting because what do you often do in yoga pants? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the best joke all day. All right. <laughs> Because it's true. Um, also, obviously, everyone always says Harry Potter when they meet you, right? That guy? Harry Potter? Oh, I read <laughs> Come on, that's cool. Harry Potter's awesome. I read Harry Potter with uh, Taya's family. And Taya, when she was like five and I was 25. <laughs> All right, so uh, where were we? Yoga pants. People do nothing in yoga pants. People also used to do yoga in yoga pants. <laughs> When you're doing yoga, often you get sweaty and you're hot, and then you have plastic oil chemicals all over you. Is that good or bad? Yeah. Bad. We don't even think about the uses of plastic. So we're drinking hot liquids out of plastic, and plastic has tons of added chemicals, like whoever finally said something back here. <laughs> tons of added chemicals, because otherwise it's a hard thing. So plastic is like literally out of like Mordor. It like couldn't be a more evil thing, and yet, we use it every day. And there's nothing wrong with using it if you have no choice, right? If you have no alternative, right? What's plastic that I'm wearing? Probably something. My stickers. Uh, my buttons. These are plastic? I don't think so. Probably something in my shoes. Newton Running. Great company in Boulder. Huh? <laughs> what? Someone said yeah. Yeah, okay. Why was that funny? I don't get it. I don't get humor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it works. Cool. Um, all right, so I think that's about it. Plastic is bad. To-go cups are bad. You should be cool. Being cool is being a rebel. Being a rebel is not being a customer of Disney, an international corporation. It's actually giving a care about dogs and horses and plastic and to-go cups and the environment and climate change, and you guys are more important than me because hopefully you can save everything and give a care. And I think it's hard because often you're in, you know, parents, especially in Boulder, often are environmentalists. So you wanna, you know, be cooler than your parents, which isn't that hard, right? <laughs> but usually that means often you don't wanna do what they do, right? You don't wanna bike around with a bike trailer to go to the farmer's market and drink kombucha or whatever, right? You wanna be, you want to be cool, right? Does anyone here want to be cool? I don't know, maybe I'm talking to the wrong school. Maybe you guys are cool. So originally being cool was not caring about being cool, right? It came from jazz. It was an expression that, does anyone know Kerouac, Beat Generation? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? You don't know Kerouac? No, I don't. Cool, when you're 18 you'll find out. Okay. So. <laughs> So originally being cool was about just doing your own thing, right? Just being kind of independent and, and kind of caring, like being a craftsperson, right? Doing your thing like really well, whatever it was. <laughs> like whatever it is that you love, do it well. If you're a skateboarder, you get really into it, you do it well. You don't kind of just half do it, right? If you ride horses, maybe I'm losing people. Someone had a uh, <laughs> hand back there, yeah. Yeah. said, who in here is an environmentalist? Right. And when I heard that, I thought you meant like uh, somebody who's like actually like going to court and suing right. big corporations and stuff like that. 
And um, <laughs> Mr. Smarty Pants up here. <laughs> well, so, but like, yeah. I feel like a lot of us in this room are doing. Do you mind standing up? Yeah, sure. This is awesome. I feel like a lot of us in this room are doing. Like, I see everyone doing these things. Like, yeah. this is happening. Like, we're you know, Mr. Mesner has like probably done like an hour of just talking about proposals and all this stuff. <laughs> An hour on compostables for an environmentalist, just so you know, an hour is nothing. We're just getting started. We could talk about compost, composting all day long and all night. Actually, a lot of the hottest dates between environmentalists are spent talking about composting. It's like Portlandia. All right, no, continue. I feel like as a school, like the people in this room, I feel like we are like... Yeah. We, we are. Let's listen. This is good. We are doing. We are into this. It's not like I. I know that we're not all just gonna be like, you know, at the earth. This is, you know, like this. Like we all. Guys, let's listen. listen. You guys we all listen. are into this. We all do this. You know, I guarantee, like, yes. at least five, at least a couple people in this room have houses with solar. Right now, I'm living in a tiny house that's run on solar, and uh, you know uh, we're collecting rainwater and all that stuff. So, um, so why do you collect rainwater? I uh, we <laughs> we do it for one. Water's expensive, but um, yeah, no, another, that's important. For yeah. another, uh, it's. Um, Let's listen, guys. You can listen. It's sustainable for us because yeah. rain as long as. Rain have a high content of oil, then we can use that rain to do other stuff as long as we yeah. have Let me talk about water for one second. So the Colorado River, which is huge, is anyone rafted in it? We're gonna come back to him. So we're we're coming back to him. Colorado River, is anyone rafted in it? What did it do for sixty million years? Run. Basically, yeah, it ran to the ocean. What does it not do for the first time in sixty million years? Huh? Run, to the ocean. Run to the ocean. You're getting you're getting the thread on my various questions. The answers are really easy. So why does it not run to the ocean anymore? Sorry, whispering people. <laughs> what? Not enough water, right? But why does it have not not enough water? Because we're using it all. Because we're using it all. So literally, Las Vegas, Denver, all these various cities. Anyone correct me if I'm wrong on the various cities. I can't remember the cities, but Vegas is a big one. And they're actually pretty good with their water use overall. But they're taking water out of the river, and then the river dies, right? So is Boulder a desert or not? It is a desert. If we stopped stealing water from other places for even one year, most of the trees would die. I think around 2000, maybe 2000, when I moved back, there was a drought. Does anyone remember? Old, old farts like me? It was around 2000. A bunch of these huge old trees on, on uh, Mapleton Avenue died because they died of thirst. When you went to Foolish Craig's or wherever, you had to ask for a glass of water. They wouldn't give it to you. We were out of water, right? So that's actually the reality, except we're just stealing water from mostly the Colorado River around here, not Boulder exactly, okay? So that's why rainwater is super important. So let's come back to you for one second. Do you mind standing up again? All right, so, so what do you do? Are you drinking out of a to-go cup? Uh, <laughs> it's compostable, it's compostable. So that's an important point, is when you're an environmentalist, you don't have to be perfect, and you don't have to be, and being hypocritical is like what you do every single day, because no one's gonna be perfect, right? You just care, that's all you do, you care, and if you, figure out something like to-go cups, then you change your behavior, or maybe you bike. Does anyone here bike to school? Bike, 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 bike. Or a skateboard or anything like that. Bus, walk, bus, anything other than driving in a car alone with your parents or whoever. 
you're driving alone at this age, good work. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so electric cars are far from perfect because why? Batteries. 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 Yeah. And, you know, lithium and all that. They, 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 use they, use they, coal power. they use coal power unless you have solar, right? But solar comes from stuff too, often that's made in China, right? It's complicated. So, um, but electric cars are awesome because they're literally changing our entire corporate capitalistic infrastructure. Those three guys love talking. It's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I'm leaving you hanging. So, tiny house, solar, rainwater, just tell me why Why do you do all that? Is it your parents, or is it um, you, or what? I was introduced to tiny house when I was in fifth grade, yeah. and um, so we were bought out by FEMA. Anyway, long story short, I was like, Mom, we can build tiny houses. With, with the uh, flood or something? Yeah. yeah. So, we were all, so like, FEMA came here and... And bought us out. So, yeah. I was like, Mom, let's build tiny houses, and it'll, it'll be awesome. And... Um, he probably wasn't going to do it unless he didn't have a choice, uh, so that's essentially why it ended right. up happening, but um, we, we now are all running off of solar, and I feel like it's kind of like, um, more like I'm, I'm kind of doing my, a little bit of my part in like yeah. helping the, the thing, the, the thing, <laughs> the environment, the planet, the thing that we live on, the what earth. Is round thing. Yeah. Or maybe it's flat, I don't know. You know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who cares? Just science. All right, so that's exactly it. You just try and do your part. And if you figure out something that you're not doing that you care about, like the main thing is just find something to care about. And that's pretty easy. If you can't care about anything, then you're probably not a very interesting, nice person. And no one likes you. Wow. I'm just kidding. But it's kind of true. Wow. Are you feeling rejected right now? Did you feel like that was about you? <laughs> I'm sure if you think about it, you care about something. I, I mean, I, I do. You do. <laughs> you don't have to be specific. It might take time to think of it. No, but we all care about something. And maybe we care about, like, pesticides is a fancy word for poison, right? We were talking about poison earlier with bleach and stuff. Pesticides, I think Jane Goodall, does anyone know who she is? She said, who is she? What's that? And she's super cool, in my opinion. She's super cool. What's that? Cool. Was that cool or? Yeah. Yeah. So Jane Goodall is like one of my idols, and she said, "Who had the crazy idea that we should put poison on food? Would it, does anyone here? If I gave you a bowl of poison right now, would you drink it? No. Other than that guy, maybe. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But all of us, all of us. Do all of you eat organic every single day? All the time? No. None of us do, right? You do? Well, unless I'm going out to a restaurant. But that's what I'm saying. You go to Mountain Sun, suddenly it's not organic, right? I like Mountain Sun, but it's not organic. So that's a great point. If you go out to a restaurant, it's literally everything you eat is covered in pesticides. And probably, as Bill McKibben, who I've interviewed a bunch of times, he's a cool dude, kind of. Um, he's a, he's an amazing human. Um, he's not that hip, um, but he uh, you know him. But he uh, he's he talks about how every plate of food that you eat has been shipped, usually in a truck, a big stinking truck, fifteen hundred miles, right? How many miles has the food at the farmers market been shipped? Who said three feet or whatever? Yes, that's pretty accurate. It hasn't been shipped. It's been like trucked there in like an old F-100 that morning. Like, oh, we're going to the farmer's market. <laughs> right? <laughs> Apparently truck, trucker imita imitations are huge. You guys should have told me that ahead of time. All right. Um, that's about all I got. Basically, you can live a good life. You can make tons of money. You can be cool. You can be an environmentalist. You can save the world. Like, you guys are in a generation, thanks to, like, technology and all this stuff, where you can have your cake, organic cake, with no sugar. sugar. It's probably gluten-free. <laughs> <laughs> with local berries on it. Local berries. You can have your cake and eat it, too.
you really don't have to make a choice. In past generations, it was harder, right? You do have to make tough choices as an environmentalist. And anyone who tells you differently is lying. But what else is new? New. Adults love to lie to you guys because we want your money. And we want your parents' money actually more if you don't have that much money. <laughs> All right, so uh, help me out here. Here's the round where you help me out. Does anyone want me to talk about anything? Or we can just meditate for half an hour in silence. Okay, let's do it. Um, right. I hope I could. <laughs> <laughs> so, whenever you graduate from college, we'll hire you. You come work. So, yeah. Uh, a lot of the reason why I think the food is being shipped 1,500 miles, well, roughly. Yeah, uh, and poison. To, uh, and poison. Yeah. Uh, to us is and then, because we and want then package in, And then package in plastic. Sorry, Orvin. Um, package in plastic. Yeah. Yeah. I went to uh, some big store and they literally had to Uber every individual apple yeah. package in the same box. Yeah, Costco does that. Um, but what are foods? They do that for bananas too. Yeah. And, the, and the joke is if only bananas came in their own packaging that was compostable, <laughs> wouldn't that be amazing? What are the foods that don't need to travel that already get here? What are the foods that would be on the lower end of that spectrum? Great question. Anyone? And are still not like a million dollars to buy in the grocery Right. I hate it when I buy those million dollar local apples. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you go to the farmer's market, just an easy way to answer that, if you go to the farmer's market, almost everything there is local. Not everything. Like I get the olives there. I don't think we have olive farm, orchard. What's an olive place? Olive, olive trees, orchard. olive groves. Olive groves. We don't have olive groves here, I don't think. Um, but almost everything there is local. What's that? What's that? What? Sorry. Did you say something? What's that? Sorry. I thought you said something. What was that? I'm kind of bored of the sound of my own voice, so I'm just trying to get you guys to talk. It's exactly what my ex girlfriend used to say to me. I thought that was funny. All right, any questions? Any questions for me? Any statements? Any random acts of poetry? Yeah, go ahead. What? No? <laughs> so I, I was talking to her. She said something and then she dived into her. <laughs> oh, that's a, good, that's a good subject. All right. I think I can burn at least 10 minutes yelling at you guys about eating meat. All right. So who here, why don't you guys guess how many pounds I weigh? Big boy. <laughs> 160. 160? 185. 185. Or 192. 170. Is that you? Yeah, I'm 192. I mean, I haven't weighed myself since this morning, and I had a big muffin, so. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm like, I'm, sometimes I'm 200 pounds, speaking of Mountain Sun. Sometimes I'm, sometimes I'm uh, 188 or something, but basically I'm 192 most of the time. That's relatively big for a human being, right? Six foot three. I bike all day. I climb when I'm not super injured. I'm super injured right now. Um, I am. I can't really raise my arm. Oh, this will this will waste. Wow, that was a big hit. Okay, we'll go up to the side. <laughs> So that's actually a real thing. I was supposed to have cervical neck surgery where they take out an entire vertebrae and put a dead person's one in and then fuse two together this oh, week. Okay. But I'm recovering because I eat organic and I don't use to-go cups. <laughs> um, so what were we talking about? So I'm kind of a big boy. Do I, do I eat meat? No. Do I need to eat meat to be healthy and have tons of energy no. and be awesome? Is eating meat macho? It's more macho yeah. than meat, right? Yeah. yeah. If you hunt, maybe it's sort of macho. Maybe it's sort of macho. I'm Buddhist, so I don't like the whole killing thing, you know? Killing for pleasure kind of thing. But if you hunt, maybe it's sort of macho. Buying meat that's already been ground up for you, wrapped in plastic and styrofoam in a grocery store is not macho. It's consumption. You're just buying stuff with money. Is that macho? <laughs> so I'm not sure that eating meat is macho. Um, and you know, ha who has seen, what was that movie uh, with uh, Eddie Murphy, uh, 
Beverly Hills Cop. In that movie, they have this scene. Has anyone seen that movie? It's like from the 80s, which was before the 90s, which was before the zeros, which is before now. Um, but in that movie, they talk about how your average guy, adult male, has how many pounds of old dead meat just sitting around that hasn't ever been digested in their tummy? How many pounds? Just Five sitting pounds. there. Huh? Five Way more. Way less. Huh? I feel like I'm on the, on the trading floor of New York Stock Exchange. 15, 18. 30. So that's a lot. Is that fact true? He said 25. He said that's Oh, I thought you said, uh, I don't remember. I have no memory of that moment, actually. Um, which doesn't surprise any of my regular viewers. I have no memory. Has any of you seen West Wing? I just watched a little bit with my mom last night for the first time, her first time. West Wing, anyone? Oh, jeez. <laughs> this is what happens when you get old. No one knows any of your references. So in West Wing, there's a president, and he's always rattling off statistics, like, did you know that 30% of the African-American population is incarcerated before the age? All these amazing statistics. You're like, oh my god, I'm learning so much, and suddenly I care about the world. It's this great show. The West Wing is on the Netflix, and, um, but anyway, I'm like the opposite of President Bartlett, because he remembers everything and, and can throw stats down. I'm like, I'm pretty sure environment is good, <laughs> and uh, I don't remember why. <laughs> I think it's to do with the earth being, is it flat, or was it round, or a different, is there another option, square? <laughs> um, okay, so me, so you can, eat no meat and be healthy. So now at that point it's just a choice, right? You can eat meat or not. Is it a choice for the animal that's getting eaten? No. It's not. So if you're a nice person who likes the animals, maybe think about eating less meat or no meat. And then you can become a self-righteous, superior vegan who yells at other people like, <laughs> like me. All right, so that covered veganism. I think that was like 10 minutes. Thank you, lady who keeps collapsing in laughter into her friend's shoulder repeatedly. This is her thing. <laughs> Literally, her reaction when I did that was to collapse into her friend's shoulder. Stop it. It's like, me too. Okay. All right, anything else? Veganism, we've talked about com composting. Anything you guys want to talk about? Doesn't even have to be on subject. It could be totally irrelevant. This guy, the star. How much greenhouse gas? I just uh, said I can't remember stuff. Okay. Well, yeah. I know that like there's Cows some significant percentage of yeah. uh, greenhouse gases that are produced by farm animals who are in um, you know uh, feedlots. What? Which basically farting. Uh, uh, fun word. Uh, farting. Yeah. Um, Methane gas. Would help them die essentially. Yeah. So cows fart a lot, and part of the reason they fart a lot is because they're eating weird stuff that we feed them that they can't digest. It's like the, if any of you are, are like celiac disease and you have indigestion, that's how cows feel all the time because we're feeding them stuff they shouldn't eat. Cows who eat grass actually don't fart that much. Why are we talking about cow farting? I don't remember. No, I do. We're talking about cow farting because it's, it causes an incredible amount of, it produces a ton of methane, which is basically like, if you can't remember why, what methane is, it's bad. Methane bad. Methane uh, contributes to greenhouse gases and to climate change, right? Climate change, bad. Is climate change good or bad? Anyone? Bad. Cool. Good job. All right. Yeah. What is your thoughts on the changes made by Donald Trump on to the what? The cuts that he's made in different programs, like environmentalist programs, meals on wheels, all these different things. Like, what's your response? I'm just curious. Well, if I were talking to I would say, your tremendous cuts are sad. They're the worst. They're horrible. You're fired. <laughs> Sorry, my arm can't really lift, so I'm a little like. <laughs> um, so, if I were talking to him, um, I would say, all those cuts he's making are largely symbolic. 
because they're, they're, he's cutting a small percentage of a small percentage of the budget, right? And Republicans, who I respect, think that government should be smaller, right? If government is smaller, are we getting into war or not? Or not? No. Traditionally, Republicans used to be anti-war. Isn't that interesting? Republicans used to not want to get into war because what does war do other than death and mayhem? What? It costs a lot of money. So at the same time as Trump is growing our entire budget by, what was it, $50 billion in military? $50 billion? Guess how much Meals on Wheels costs? Meals on Wheels. Doesn't even cost $1 billion, I don't think. No, it doesn't. It's not. He's cussing. He's, he's, like, he's almost like, I mean, I'm a nonpartisan kind of guy. I love Trump, personally. I think he's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he's literally cutting, like, it's like out of a cartoon. He's cutting taking food to old people who can't leave their homes, right? That's crazy. That sounds crazy. Even if I'm a Trump fan, that seems crazy. Did I mention? That seems nuts. Is anyone here in support of, like, hurting old people who can't leave their homes? <laughs> well, someday soon you guys will be voters, so remember that. And then uh, he's cutting, like, Sesame Street, right? PBS. Science. Um, what was the other thing? EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. Has anyone heard of Flint, Michigan? What's the issue with Flint? Huh? They have bad water. Why do they have bad water? Lead. Okay. That was good. Lead in the water. Where does lead come from? Why is there poison, poisonous lead in the pipes? Because the EPA is too weak and inefficient to do a good job already. So what do you do if something is not powerful enough to help people? Do you make it weaker? No. You make it stronger. So Trump just made the EPA weaker. He's, he took out all mentions of climate change. Climate change is not a real thing, according to the government of, or at least the presidency, the executive branch of the United States of America. Sci what percentage of climatologists, scientists versed in climate change, think climate change is a real thing. Anyone? Just say 100 and I can move on. What? No, that's wrong. Anyone? All of us. Huh? 98. 98, yeah, it's like 96, 97, 98 percent of scientists think that science is real, basically. And then the other 3% is John Stewart used to say, think um, eating sugar and never brushing your teeth is probably good for you, right? They've been bought off a little bit, you know? So, what were we talking about? Old person. Old woman. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> Is this a dream? Am I naked? Oh. Um, so, what were we talking about, Mom? Um, EPA was the last thing. Oh, yeah. So, he's cutting the EPA. They're removing all mentions of climate change from the EPA. That's like men removing all mentions of basketball from the NBA. It's literally what the EPA is about. All right, they're dribbling down the court with the, uh, you know, and uh, now they're shooting with the, uh, and uh, the score is uh, because whoever has made more, um, you know, what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, the game is over. That was great. All right. Any other questions or uh, any criticisms, any attacks? Yeah. So we're not the government, we're not with right. Trump, et cetera. So right. we haven't talked about um, what, what we all can do. What we can do. Great question. Great question. So I really want to start today by talking about the caring thing and the cool thing. Because unless you feel like it's kind of cool to care, unless you guys feel like giving a care, to use a polite term, right, is important, all this is pointless. If I tell you to bike or do organic or whatever, who cares, right? If you don't care, you don't care. So how many people feel like you care? If you're raising your hand, raise it all the way, otherwise you're just caring a little bit. All right, look at your neighbors and point at them and yell at them if they're not raising their hands. No peer pressure. No pressure. All right, I don't know who was pointing at you, but that's cool. If you're still raising your arm, a couple of you are, you really care. All right, so um, environmentalism should be something we all care about. If we like to ski, you need snow. 
Who ever has ever skied in Vermont? Uh, I went to I went to um, high school in Vermont, and in 20 years, sorry, I started doing the robot. <laughs> I'm not really sure. I was at a wedding last weekend, and it was a big hit. Uh, so in 20 years, there will be no more snow in winter in Vermont. Has anyone heard that? All of you have heard that. I just said it. So that's literally true. Literally true, dude. You know? Um, that blows my mind. That's like saying there's not going to be any you know, ice in uh, Antarctica, which would never happen. Glaciers would never break up and start dissolving into water and raising sea levels. I was just in Miami. I was just in Miami, and guess what they're spending millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions, millions of dollars doing? Huh? Pump. Pump. This guy. Who is that guy? Wilder. <laughs> that is Wilder. Wilder? Even his name is environmental. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Wilder? Wilder or? Oh, I guess it's Wilder. Um, so they're, pump, they're spending $40, $50 million pumping the ocean out of Miami Beach and Miami. Because the ocean is rising because the, uh, the glaciers are dissolving. If I sounded really stupid saying that, it's because I am. The <laughs> glaciers are, uh, and then the water, and then they have to, you know, and it's bad. Um, so that's expensive. So Republicans also love to care about the economy. And it's going to hurt our economy if climate change continues and is allowed to continue. So recently, the whole world got together in the Paris Agreement, right, and made like a pretty weak but really amazing and wonderful agreement to kind of generally try to address this stuff, right? Uh, maybe it's real, maybe. Je ne sais pas, mais. You know, the Paris, you know, Paris Agreement. Um, yeah. They're putting it, uh, uh, they're taking it in helicopters and dropping it in on fires in the Rockies. <laughs> <laughs> so it all works out. We, so we have more and more wildfires, right, in the Rockies. We've lost millions of pine trees. Why? Anyone? And why is the beetle so mean suddenly? Because it never freezes in the winter. It never freezes in the winter. Winter is known for freezing, being freezing in the Rockies. So it's so warm now in the Rockies that the pine beetles never freeze to death, and then they kill all the pine trees, right? And that affects Republicans and Democrats and everyone. So I really want to, even though some of you, I know you're all huge Trump fans, but <laughs> it's important that we don't make this partisan. It is political. It's important to care about politics and care about all these things. But the fact is we should all be caring about this stuff, right? Like caring about good air is something we all need, right? So what were we talking about? What, with the water. Um, I think they just, I don't know. It's a fantastic question. I think they just pump it back out into the ocean. No, <laughs> oh, came back. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It's, sort of it's sort of a funny uh, thing. I hadn't thought about it. Why did it come back? Um, all right. Any other, do you want to say anything? Since you're a big deal. <laughs> Yeah, Ryan. Yeah, so we have a picture here, and yeah. you grew up here. On like a personal note, yeah. so you have this magazine, yeah. Elephant Journal. <laughs> what? Am country. I messing it up more? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Around the country, New York store, there was a huge following. Yeah. And you decide not to publish anymore. Right. Can you talk about the reasons that led to that, like both, that were both personal? I will. But also... I will, and I'll also get to what we can do. If people really think you care, like no peer pressure, I'll talk about a few things you can do. So I grew up really poor, because my mom was horrible at making money. It's right there. So I grew up really poor. So I wanted to do two things. I wanted to change the whole world for the better, save the world, because I was a Buddhist guy, and Buddhists are into like being nice and peaceful, and being a benefit, right? Being a benefit, like being good to the world. And most religions and non-religions are all into that. Who here wants to be good for the world and good for the planet? And good for yourself and good for your friends? Most of us. Some of you, <laughs> sketchy people, but. <laughs> so I wanted to be good for the world. What was the other thing I really wanted to do growing up really poor? 
Money. Make a lot of money. I wanted to make a lot of money. I wanted to make so much money. Um, yeah, like there's some scene in some movie where you're like drowning in money. That that was like kind of I, I thought that would be nice because then with money you can also be a benefit. You can donate to cool things like you know dolphins or something. You can help the dolphins. You can help the elephants. Elephants are going extinct. Lions are going extinct. You can help the uh, endangered bees. Hey, little bee. Um, <laughs> um, so I wanted to make money. So and I loved writing. So I wanted to become a writer. Or uh, in my case, I started a magazine. The magazine went national, like it was in every Whole Foods and all that in the whole U.S. Right? Bookstores. And suddenly I was making money. Right? I got to buy one of those boulder houses that I'd grown up in that I could no longer afford. Right? Everything was great, but I realized, and I was printing, printing on FSC paper, probably most of you don't know what that is, good paper, good ink, la la la. We're shipping it all over, right? Remember the food shipping 1,500 miles? So the bigger we got, the bigger our impact was, and the worse I was for the environment. That didn't feel so good. So then this whole thing called the internet came along. Have you guys heard of the internet? No. It's a technical no. thing, you probably don't, don't know. Um, so I decided to jump over the internet. internet. There was a time when there was no YouTube, no Facebook, no WordPress. WordPress enabled people to blog for free and then you could read it instantly halfway across the planet. That's kind of magic. Anyone who read Harry Potter, some one of those first books was published in like 2000 or something. Anyone remember? 99. Yeah, a little bit before. It was literally considered magic in the first Harry Potter book that the images would move on the newspaper. That's literally what every internet site does, right? You click a video and you watch a video and it's moving, right? So the internet's kind of magic for old people. It's cool. Because um, we didn't used to have, also cell phones are kind of magic. When I lived in Boston in the 90s, you would arrange to meet someone, right? On a phone, on a cord. And you'd say, okay, I'll meet you at the corner of whatever and whatever at 11 o'clock. If someone was 10 minutes late or 10 minutes early or waited on a wrong corner, what do you do for the rest of the day? You wandered around aimlessly. <laughs> you, your whole day was changed, right? Now you're like, so where are they? Oh. You know, look, <laughs> look at this GIF. Um, or GIF. Is it GIF or GIF? I don't know. Um, so, so I took the, my magazine that was profitable and it employed people. I took it online. I lost all my money. I went into foreclosure. I tweeted at Citibank. I got out of foreclosure. I went on. I got a nice big business and we're no longer paper. So it's a happy kind of ending. Now I can retire. <laughs> so basically the point I think is if you care about something you can make changes and it might be really hard. And anyone who says environmentalism is fun or easy or anything like that, that is probably half true. Because sometimes it is fun or easy, right? But sometimes, like what's a fun or easy environmentalist thing to do? We're running out of time so I'll just answer. Bicycling is super fun and it's super easy, to me at least. I love biking. It's free, you have valet parking, you get in better shape, you don't get fat like most, like me. Um, <laughs> nothing's wrong with being fat. <sighs> All right. <laughs> so that's super fun or easy, but there are environmental things that involve a lot of sacrifice and it can be hard. And I think that's part of the reason it's cool. You actually have to care. You have to be willing to do something. Like sushi, do you know how sushi is made? Anyone here like sushi? Boom, raw fish. It's good. All right, fish is, a lot of the sushi you eat is caught off the coast of California, and then they fly it, they freeze it, they fly it all the way to Japan, where they cube it up. This is called fresh, by the way. And then they ship it in a boat, which takes a long time, all the way back to Colorado, which, by the way, doesn't have, like, you know, tuna or whatever, and unfreeze it, and they call it fresh. So sushi, and it's all in styrofoam and dry ice and stuff. So sushi is like one of the most intensive environmental things you could ever do. Plus you're killing fish and fish have feelings. <laughs> or they did until you killed them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here's a few things you can do. The main thing I just want to say is just make a decision for yourself. Like, like maybe this guy <laughs> did, maybe Wilder did, maybe a few of you did. Just make a decision if you care. Because I don't really care if you bike or if you eat organic or if you eat local, or if you use to-go cups, or if you compost, or if you do all that environmental stuff. I don't really, because all of that will happen if you care. I do care if you care. And if you don't care, that kind of breaks my heart, which won't make you care, 
but I'll be really sad. Because if you do care, this world can be a better place. Am I right? It's kind of a cool world. I'm pointing at you. Yeah. Are you asleep? Yeah. Do you sleep with your eyes open? <laughs> <laughs> so if you care, so there's a, does anyone know The Little Prince, Petit Prince? Oh, yeah. So there's this line in there, which I, I say all the time to my staff, and they say, we've already heard it, keep quiet. I say all the time to my staff, it says, if you want to teach people to love the ocean, don't teach... Uh, to love sailing or something. Don't. <laughs> if you want to teach people love sailing or that love the ocean, or, no, it's love sailing. <laughs> Let's restart. If you want to teach people to love sailing. sailing, don't teach them how to, you know, tie knots and do this and do that. Right? Teach them to love the ocean. Because if you love the ocean, you're going to get out there, right? Who loves skateboarding or surfing or skiing or whatever, right? Do you, do you go do those things because you're an environmentalist rebel? No, you do it because you love it. So if you decide you love being an environmentalist, caring about stuff, if you basically decide that you... That it's more important for you to care than to try to be, to fit in with everyone else, then honestly our planet... Which will be good, because you guys are the ones who are going to suffer if it's not safe. Because all of us will be what? Dead. Hey. Yeah, we'll be <laughs> Only if we're put in the right bin. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, does anyone have one final question or statement? You can ruin the whole thing. Say something funny. Or a serious question. One final thing. Oh, my God. People are exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, we've done a blog on that on Elephant. It's a cool thing. So the process of dying is crazy in America. We coat ourselves in, like, uh, things that... So we kind of don't rot, basically. And we, like, put makeup on. And someone has to take, like, the stuff out of us, right? And then they dress us. It's disgusting. And then put a suit on or something. And then everyone's like, oh, you look so good. <laughs> and they're like, you know. They're like one of those deer up on the walls in like a you know country bar. So, yeah, no, I'll, I, I don't really care what I do when I die because I'll be dead. But I think it would be cool if I'm like in decent shape, like I'm just ready to die, to go on an airplane ride over a huge ocean and just like, woo, cowabunga, you know, and just go out. That would be kind of fun. But it's hard to figure. But it's hard to figure the timing on that one, right? Because maybe you have a couple more years to live, and you kind of. I could have watched another season of, you know, whatever on, on Netflix. Bad. What? Breaking Bad. I've already watched all Breaking Bad, man. Gotham. It's so violent. What's that? Gotham. Gotham. Cool. Right. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. I hope that was uh, fun. And did anyone? Okay. Let's have one final show of hands. Be honest. Don't raise your hands if you don't mean it. Do you feel like you care about the environment? Are you an environmentalist? Be honest. Be honest. You can lower your hands. Lower your hands if you don't believe it. Okay. That's, that's an improvement. All right. Thank you so much, guys.